Hi and welcome to Potex Tech Lightning. In today's Lightning video we will talk about the Azure Cross Region Load Balancer. Now this feature is in currently in preview, but in my opinion it's very close to general availability. So let's dig into it and see how it can be used. Here we go. Azure Load Balancer is considered a regional load balancer. That means that the service distributes traffic within virtual networks, within or across an Azure data center. With the cross-region load balancer, we are now getting the possibility to distribute traffic across regional backends. The power of cross-region is to load balance where the latency is the best. For example, if we receive internet traffic from a client in Sweden, we want to load balance this to a node as close as possible to this region. It would be silly to have nodes available in West Europe Amsterdam, and then load balance the traffic all the way to the West US. As you may have guessed by now, this is all possible with the Azure Cross Region Load Balancer. Let's have a look at how this works on a high level and how you can use it. We have the Cross Region Load Balancer set up here in our environment. Behind this we have a couple of public load balancers located in different regions. We have one in West Europe and one in North Europe. Two different but very cool regions. Behind each public load balancer there is a workload of virtual machines. It's quite a normal setup there's nothing special about this one. Incoming traffic from the internet, it will hit the cross-region load balancer, who will then direct the traffic to the best suited public load balancer. It uses something called geo-proximity load balancing algorithm to decide on the routing. The cross-region load balancer always comes with a static public IP address. This is to ensure that IP address always remain the same. This load balancer is a layer four passed through network load balancer, so in practice it means that it preserves the original IP of the packet. There are two concepts you need to know with regards to cross-region load balancers, and we need to clear these ones out. There is something called home regions. Now this is the region where the load balancer is deployed. There are only a few selected home regions. Now, even if you would deploy a cross-load balancer in West Europe, this service is still globally redundant. If the home region goes down, the traffic is not affected. Then there's something called participating regions, which are by count many more than home regions. These participating regions are actually where the global public IP address of the load balancer is being advertised. Meaning, this is where your public load balancers can be load located and traffic routed to accordingly. The current limitations of this service are cross-region front-end IP configuration or public only. Internal frontends are currently not supported. Private or internal load balancer cannot be added to the backend pool of a cross-region load balancer. Only public load balancers works as the backend. UDP traffic is not supported. Health probes cannot be configured at this moment. I expect this to be changed in the near future. So you're actually stuck with a default health probes which collects availability information every 20 seconds. Wow, that was the eagle eye overview of the cross-region load balancer. In my opinion, it's a really cool service and will hopefully hit general available at any point soon. The strength to use multiple region redundancy at layer four with just a few clicks is pretty awesome. So I hope this video was useful for you. Until next time, take care and see you.